Greetings, YouTube. There are so many tools and methods and ways of doing things within Darktable that sometimes it's really confusing on knowing what the right tool for the job is. And I certainly found that to be the case when learning to add contrast to my photos in Darktable because, well, there are so many ways to add contrast in Darktable, it's like, well, which one do I freaking use? In this video, I intend to demystify the process of adding contrast within Darktable and hopefully make it easier to understand as well. So stick around, grab some coffee, and together we can rule the world of Darktable. So in tools like Adobe Lightroom, adjusting contrast is often very easy and straightforward. So we can often just increase contrast by adjusting the contrast slider. We could also adjust the white or black points of the image, and we could also increase the clarity or texture slider as well. So Darktable can do these very same things with even more power and control, but the methods of doing such things aren't as readily as apparent, and we can do many things to achieve the same goal. So how do we actually effectively add contrast and how do we know when a particular method is best? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the tone mapping modules like Sigmoid and Filmic RGB to add simple but effective contrast, how to use the color balance RGB module to add contrast of more control and to expand the dynamic range of your photograph, and how to use the contrast equalizer to add clarity and texture to your photographs. And lastly, when you should pick a particular method over another. All right, so we're in Darktable now, and this first photograph here is an image I took of some beautiful orchid flowers, and I'm actually entering a, a local photographic competition for taking photographs of orchids at a display, and this is one of my photographs. So I really like this photograph because I think it has some very beautiful hues of yellow and purple and green, and in particular, the yellow contrasts the purple very nicely, and there's some really nice softness to the colors in this photograph. And I think that this is an excellent candidate to add some simple contrast pop. All right, so I've done some basic image processing to get this image into its current state. And what I've done so far is add some color with the uh, color balance RGB module. And I've also added some sharpening as well with the diffuse and sharpen module with the lens the blur medium preset. And if you'd like to check out more information on the basic workflow I use to process images, see the video card above. So according to the developers of Darktable, the uh, recommended method of adding contrast is actually not through the tone mapping modules like Sigmoid or Filmic RGB. And in Sigmoid here, we have a contrast slider. What they typically recommend is to go to a module like the color balance RGB module and play around with the various different sliders like perceptual brilliance, the shadows and highlights, we'll, we'll get to that later, or the contrast slider. And we can actually add contrast in a very controlled way doing that, but sometimes, I actually think that using the Sigmoid module's contrast slider delivers very effective results and it doesn't distort the color in any way. All right, so let's face it. Sometimes in image processing, we don't wanna spend a gargantuan amount of time adjusting like 15 or 20 different sliders to get the result we want. We just wanna adjust one slider that allows us to get a really effective result in a really quick manner. And that's exactly what the Sigmoid module's contrast sliders allows us to do. So in adding contrast with the Sigmoid module, I typically recommend adjusting the slider to somewhere like maybe 1.65, 1.7, where it's a good amount of contrast, but not too much contrast. And I'm gonna go ahead and add 1.7 here. And as you can see, going back and forth, that adds a really nice amount of contrast pop and it brought out the colors as well. Now, a quick note on the colors, if we go ahead and use another module like color balance RGB and we start adjusting contrast, we will adjust the contrast without the uh, color coming up with it as well. And we'll have to make further modifications to the color to get it to look right to our taste. Whereas if you go ahead and use Sigmoid and add contrast, the color comes up with it. It's very simple, it's very effective. It looks really organic and it looks really nice. So I do recommend using the uh, contrast slider in Sigmoid because it delivers great results. All right, so we're setting the Sigmoid module's contrast back to default state. Another thing we might wanna do in Darktable is add some simple local contrast. And there's two ways we can do that in Darktable, and I'm gonna quickly go over both of them and also share my favorite method as well. 
So to describe what local contrast is, I'm going to call upon this uh, web article here, link in the description below. And this article describes local contrast as small scale or local contrast is that between much smaller adjacent areas of the image. Improve this and you've made the shadow and highlight areas where contrast is most compressed appear broader. And we're going to go ahead and add some local contrast to this photograph here. All right, so let's add some local contrast to this photograph. And the first way we can do that is via the local contrast module. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on at default state and we can adjust these sliders to our taste if needed. If I turn it off, turn it back on again, as you can see, it adds a nice amount of local contrast to this photograph. But one thing worth noting is that when we do that, the uh, balance of the color is a little bit more subdued in comparison to the contrast. So in this case, if we're using this module, we'll have to go back to the uh, color balance RGB module and adjust the color. However, the method of adding local contrast that I'm most fond of is actually with the uh, diffuse and sharpen module. If you go into the uh, diffuse and sharpen module, there's an excellent default setting called a preset called local contrast. I'm going to go ahead and add that here. And when we do that, it adds a really nice amount of local contrast, and it also brings up the color contrast as well, giving us very good looking and organic results. So sometimes in image processing, simple contrast sliders doesn't give us enough control to give us the look we really want. And this image here is an example of that. And I took this photograph in the middle of a very hazy and blurry snowstorm. And this image is very diffuse and has very little contrast. And actually, if you look up at the waveform up here, we can see that the uh, image information occupies a very small plane in the waveform, showing how much little contrast it has. So if I was processing this photograph in software like Adobe Lightroom, the way I'd go about that is by adjusting the exposure adjusting the white and black points to expand the dynamic range of this photograph. And what I'd like to achieve is, is I'd like that snow to be a lot brighter and be closer to white. And I also like to add some contrast to the trees as well. And we can go ahead and achieve that here, but we're going to actually use the uh, contrast adjustments within the uh, color balance RGB module. So before I go ahead and expand the dynamic range of this photograph with the color balance RGB module, the first thing I want to do is actually adjust the exposure. And the intent of doing this is to bring the midtones to a point to where I want them so that I can go ahead and actually increase the brightness of the highlights and decrease the brightness of the shadows to add that dynamic range. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the exposure. And I'm going to bring this up to about, about 1.3. Here we go. All right, now that we got the exposure set where we want it to, we can go into the uh, color balance RGB module and that's with the perceptual brilliance grading. All right, so the beautiful thing about color balance RGB is it gives us a lot of really powerful control on the way we add contrast. So we can go ahead and adjust the uh, perceptual brilliance grading here to expand the dynamic range of this photograph, expanding this waveform. And I first think it needs more adjustment in the shadows than it does highlights. So I'm going to start by pulling down the shadows, adding some contrast back to those trees. Yeah, so probably somewhere around, yeah, like negative 32 or so. And I'm going to bring up the highlights as well, making the snow and haze just a bit brighter. There we go. So this brought a lot of character to this photograph, taking a very dull photograph and transforming it to a really exceptional photograph just by adding some contrast. All right, so one final photograph for you guys. And you know, software like Adobe Lightroom have sliders for adjusting clarity and texture, and we can do the very same things in Darktable with even more power and control. And this beautiful image of these autumn leaves of icy snow is an excellent candidate for the addition of texture and clarity. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and search for the contrast equalizer in the search bar, turning it on. And in the contrast equalizer, there are three tabs. There's the Luma tab, the Chroma tab, and the Edges tab. We're going to spend most of our time in the Luma tab, but I'm going to make a quick mention to the Chroma tab as well. All right, so what the contrast equalizer does, it allows us to add contrast to various different size structures within our photograph. On the left side of the curve, we can add contrast to larger, more coarse structures. And on the right side, we can add contrast to the finer, smaller structures within our photograph. 
All right, so first things first is we can actually use our mouse's scroll wheel to change the size of the circle, making it smaller or bigger. And what that means is, is that when we make adjustments, the amount of this curve that will be affected will change. So if we actually make the circle as large as possible and we adjust the curve all at once, this is actually akin to adjusting the clarity slider in Lightroom. All right, so what I really like to use the contrast equalizer for is adding some larger level macro contrast and some smaller level micro contrast at the same time and leave a little bit of a dip in the middle. All right, so to add the macro contrast, I'm gonna to go to the left side of the curve here and I'm gonna pull this up just a little bit, adding that contrast. Yep, that's really nice. And then I'm gonna to go to the right side of the curve here and I'm gonna add that texture as well. Yeah, that brought out like the texture and the, the lines of the leaves and then the icy snow as well. You know, the contrast equalizers added a lot of characters to this photograph and it allowed us to uh, adjust the, uh, the contrast of this photograph with a lot of control. All right, so one last thing here real quick is we can go to the chroma tab and we can increase the color contrast as well. And the way I like to do that is by going to the left side here of the curve and adjusting the macro color contrast, bringing that up just a little bit, which just brings out the differences between various different colors in the photograph. And in this case, it brings out the differences between the reds, yellows, and oranges, and just adds a nice bit of extra character to the photograph. As you can see, Darktable's array of incredibly powerful tools allows us of great control to add contrast, depth, and pop to our photographs once you understand how to apply the tools effectively. I hope that this video demystified the process of effectively adding contrast in Darktable. Hey, so let me know in the comment section below what you found valuable and intriguing in this video. If you have any other ideas on how to effectively add contrast in Darktable that I didn't cover, let me know in the comments. If you disagree with anything I said, also let me know because all opinions are welcome. And lastly, if you have any pain points in Darktable, let me know as well because it gives me great ideas for future videos. Hey, so I hope you found the content of this video valuable and intriguing. If you did, leave a like. It really helps out my channel. Also, if you'd like to check out more content like this, subscribe to my channel. And lastly, if you'd like to check out some of my photographic work, see the link in the description below. Hope to see you in another video.